Hi, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Kristen Brown, and um, I'm one of the course directors for the MSC Regenerative Medicine. I'll let my colleague introduce himself. Hello, I'm John Connolly. I'm one of the other uh, co-course directors. Uh, so today we want to tell you a little bit about our program and some of the relevant research uh, that's going on at Queen Mary. Uh, so the format of today's webinar is first I will do a, a program overview and then Dr. Connolly uh, will uh, discuss some of the research. Uh, so what is regenerative medicine? Uh, regenerative medicine is using cellular biological components uh, to regenerate damaged tissues uh, and organs. Um, one interesting thing about this field is that it crosses uh, different traditional um, uh, areas of study. Uh, so it incorporates uh, knowledge of stem cell biology, uh, biomaterials and tissue engineering, uh, and clinical medicine. So it's a nice cross-disciplinary area, uh, area, and we take real efforts to make sure that our students are, are trained in all of these uh, different uh, areas. Uh, at Queen Mary, uh, we have real strengths in regenerative medicine. Uh, we have uh, labs that are doing fundamental research on stem cell biology. Uh, this includes uh, embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells and tissue-specific stem cells. Uh, we also have strength in translational research, uh, so trying to get our, uh, the um, research into the clinics. And I think a great example of this is a gene therapy study for hemophilia A that was published by one of our colleagues a few years ago. And the third strength is in developing next generation engineered tissues. And Dr. Connolly is going to talk a little bit more about this uh, when he presents later. Uh, we're very blessed to have great research facilities. We have a couple of examples on the right-hand side. Uh, the top one is in our School of Engineering and Material Science, and the bottom is in the Blizzard Institute. Uh, our master's is a full-time one-year program. Uh, it is interdisciplinary, and it's a collaboration between the School of Medicine and Dentistry and the School of Engineering and Materials Science. Uh, the design is that we have eight taught modules, uh, which make up a total of 120 credits, so they're each 15 credits. And then we conclude the year with a dissertation research project, which is worth 60 credits. On the right-hand side, uh, you can see some of, some of the nice images uh, that we've taken with the facilities that we have on campus. Uh, so in terms of the course structure, uh, the first term consists of four modules. Uh, these modules are, are, are a set uh, for, for all, our all our students, with uh, very few exceptions of students who've taken these before. Um, so we have um, molecular and cellular basis for regeneration, which is led by Dr. Bishop, stem cell and developmental biology, which is led by myself and uh, Dr. Branko, uh, research skills and methodology, which is led by Dr. Bergamaski, and advanced tissue engineering and regenerative medicine, which is led by Dr. Chowdhury. Uh, the second uh, term starts uh, in January, and in this term we have elective modules, and our students can choose four out of five options. Um, and these options include ethics and regulatory, uh, regulatory affairs, which is led by uh, Professor Lee and Professor Tanner. Biomaterials and regenerative medicine, which is led by Dr. Connolly. Tissue-specific stem cells, which is led by Dr. Matt Cayley. Induced pluripotent stem cells and genome engineering, which is led by Dr. Groot and neurodegenerative disease, which is led by Dr. Yip. Um, it's probably worth mentioning that several of these modules are offered to students both on the MSc Regenerative Medicine and the MSc Neuroscience. So there's a good opportunity to get to meet students on a, a similar master's um, on several of these modules. Uh, then in the, th in the third term, uh, our students uh, undertake a research project. Uh, this is a 12 week, week long research project. Um, the projects are initially distributed in October and the students have the opportunity to read about these projects and to meet with supervisors uh, to discuss the projects. And then they submit their, their choices. And we assign uh, these students to ideally one of their top choices. We just try to match as many students to one of their top choices as we can. And then the work in the labs begins in early May and really our students become full-time members of the research groups at that time. They use all the cutting edge equipment. Uh, they attend uh, group meetings. Uh, they present their work to the, the team and they get a real feel for what it's like to work within a research team uh, using, using our, our our facilities and all of our equipment that, that we have at our disposal. Uh, I thought I'd highlight just a few examples of research projects that were offered to our students who are in the course uh, at the moment. Um, we have students uh, who are working, uh, are going to work on uh, projects related to stem cell biology, such as genome edited stem cell models for severe obesity. Uh, we have 3D printing of vascularized human skin equivalents. Uh, we have cerebral organoids for living patients as a model to study brain, brain circuitry disruption and aging and Alzheimer's disease. 
And finally, ECM production in next generation bioreactors for tissue engineering. So you can see we offer a nice mix of um, stem cell biology based projects and also projects that are involved with, with tissue engineering. And on the right hand side, I've included just a couple of images that were produced by students who've taken our, our, our masters in the past. And these were used uh, generating using our high quality uh, flow cytometry and confocal microscopy equipment. And I just want to highlight the fact that our students really have access to uh, the best equipment that we have available. And this is something that always gets praised by our external examiners. Uh, so what are our teaching plans for, for, for next year? Our teaching and learning is going to be delivered via mixed mode education. Uh, we've been doing that this year, so we're very confident in how we deliver mixed mode education. And what does mixed mode education means? Uh, mean? So we offer a, a mix of on-campus activities. Uh, this includes lectures, discussions, student presentations, group work, problem solving, a really interactive uh, teaching. Uh, this is supplemented by asynchronous online activities. So these can be done in the student's own time. And this might include things like extra reading, videos, quizzes, uh, things that allow our students to consolidate their, their, their knowledge. Uh, when we say mixed mode education, uh, this means that students are able to log on to taught sessions remotely if they're unwell. Although we always encourage our students to come on campus uh, if they're able to, because we think it's a much richer uh, interaction um, if they're on campus and we can have better discussions. Uh, but they have this opportunity to log on if they can't get to campus, which, which has been very popular with the students this year. Uh, we know that our exams will be delivered online uh, uh, next year. And uh, we expect our full-time laboratory thesis projects to start in May 2023. Uh, so what kind of feedback has our program gotten? Uh, we're really proud of the feedback we've gotten from external examiners. Uh, so for example, Professor Nichols from the University of Cambridge commented, uh, the course was extremely well designed and was an with an excellent balance. And our current uh, external examiner, uh, Dr. Stavridis uh, from the University of Dundee, so this is a popular program with a good balance of knowledge across disciplines. Uh, this was this uh, comment came during COVID. Uh, so he said, uh, this was a challenging year for everyone, yet it was clear that the students were well looked after. And we're really proud of the fact that we've main, managed to maintain the high quality of our education uh, during the pandemic. Uh, so what do our students do after the MSc? Um, so one point I want to really emphasize is that we support our students for whatever their ambitions are. Um, but we have quite a lot of students who uh, aim to do a PhD and with a very good success of our master's graduates uh, moving on to PhDs, uh, not only in the United Kingdom, but also at international universities. Um, some of our graduates go on to become research assistants, so that can be in academia or perhaps in industry. We've had students who've gone to small biotech companies up to large pharma. Uh, a number of our graduates have progressed to medical school. And others have taken roots such as science publishing, teaching, consulting, um, really using the skills that they learned on the program uh, to pursue different careers that are related to science. On the right-hand side here, we have a picture of, of some of our graduates uh, from a few years ago. And actually, when I looked at this picture, I realized that we have a number of uh, people who have gone on to PhDs and actually completed PhDs now and gone to medical school. So that, that's it's a nice example of the different careers that our students have gone to. Uh, we support our students in a number of ways. Uh, we have a bespoke uh, LinkedIn alumni network, uh, which is just for graduates from our program. And we have graduates from around the world who've gone on to a variety of careers. And they, you know, can, we share insights uh, with each other and support each other. Uh, and Queen Mary offers uh, support via the Careers and Enterprise Unit. Uh, so not only can our students uh, get help with their career ambitions while they're here, but they enjoy the support for two years after they graduate. And finally, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us. Um, we will give you contact deal, uh, details uh, at the end of this presentation. And we really look forward to you joining the program and you'll be able to work on our beautiful Blizzard Institute, which is where we have just a few images here. Thank you very much for your time. And I'll pass this over to Dr. Connolly now. Thank you, Kristen. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and share uh, my screen now. and put this into presentation mode. Right, so I just wanted to uh, highlight some of the uh, interesting research that was going on within Queen Mary, particularly related to the topics around uh, regenerative medicine. And so uh, what I'll be describing today are some recent findings uh, from faculty within uh, the university uh, doing research in the areas of stem cell-based disease models, cancer stem cells, and also some recent work on immunotherapy, which 
although it's not directly related to regenerative medicine, is I think a really nice example of the, the translational um, research that people are doing here. So one of the topics that uh, is covered extensively within the course is the use of uh, induced pluripotent stem cells to model different human uh, diseases. So some of you may be aware that uh, induced pluripotent stem cells um, is a technology where uh, somatic cells from an adult are reprogrammed using genetic factors into a pluripotent state, which then allows them to differentiate into basically any tissue uh, within the body. Uh, and this is quite advantageous for a number of different applications. So it could potentially be used for uh, cell therapy uh, and tissue engineering, but importantly, it's also used for disease modeling and drug development. And that's, this is a big area of research uh, within Queen Mary. And this is what I'd like to highlight uh, in my first uh, research highlight. So, uh, here, uh, one of the lecturers on the course, Dr. Young Yao Lin, uh, he's been developing a stem cell based model of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And so, in his studies, uh, what his lab does is to uh, take skin cells from a, a DMD, a muscular dystrophy patient, reprogram them to pluripotent stem cells, and then use uh, CRISPR Cas genome engineering to correct those mutations that cause muscular dystrophy, uh, and then take those through a uh, muscle differentiation protocol to look at uh, the differences between the muscular dystrophy derived uh, cells and the ones with the uh, corrected mutation. And the aim here is to try to better understand the disease mechanisms and hopefully identify new uh, therapeutic strategies. And so just to give you some highlights from uh, some of one of his recent papers, um, they've showed that in their um, DMD-derived uh, stem cells, these uh, display poor uh, muscle differentiation compared to the ones where the mutated gene has been corrected. And importantly, they also showed that there are functional differences between the mutant and corrected uh, muscles. So for example, in this uh, 3D uh, muscle assay that uh, his lab uh, has constructed, they can actually get these uh, tissues to contract and they can see that the um, uh, DMD uh, mutant muscles are um, less able to contract, whereas the ones that have had the gene corrected can form a nice uh, strong uh, muscle contraction uh, in vitro. And so this is a really powerful tool because they now have this platform where they can study um, the differences between um, DMD muscles, both in terms of their molecular markers, but also their function. And uh, in one of his recent studies, uh, which was just published last year, uh, they further used uh, RNA-seq profiling to look at the molecular pathways and signaling that was different between the uh, mutant and corrected lines. And what they found was that, uh, in particular, the pathway associated with transforming growth factor beta signaling, or TGF beta, uh, was different between the two lines. And what they could then further do was to use these inhibitors or drugs that targeted that pathway to restore the normal differentiation in the disease model, uh, but more importantly, also restore the muscle contraction. And so I think this is a really nice example of how uh, a stem cell based model and an in vitro model can be used to better understand disease, but also open up new uh, possibilities for, for therapies and correcting uh, or treating those diseases. So another uh, area where Queen Mary has some particular strengths is in the area of cancer research. And so we're home to the Bart's Cancer Institute, which is a uh, Cancer Research UK, one of their main institutes. Uh, and there are a number of different researchers, um, those who teach on the course and uh, host projects that are uh, involved in cancer research. And one of the, the topics that we emphasize on the program are uh, the role of cancer stem cells in uh, cancer progression and treatment. And so we have lectures from Professor Sylvia Marino, who studies uh, cancer stem cells in glioblastoma, and Dr. Adrian Biddle, who studies cancer stem cells in oral uh, squamous cell carcinoma. And some of the research that they're working on is trying to understand 
how these uh, specialized cancer stem cells give rise to a tumor and how they can be more targeted effectively uh, in therapy. And so you, this is uh, one area where um, we have projects and uh, cover quite extensively uh, on our program. And then last, uh, I just want to highlight a uh, exciting uh, new finding that was just uh, published in the New England uh, Journal of Medicine. Uh, and this is a much more uh, clinical and therapeutic uh, study um, led by uh, Peter Schmidt in the uh, Barts Cancer Institute. And so here they were combining uh, immunotherapy with traditional um, breast cancer therapy, um, chemotherapy, um, and found that the combination of the two provided uh, improved survival in this particularly aggressive form of triple negative uh, breast cancer. Um, so I think this is another uh, a nice example as well of how some of these uh, therapies and biomedical research that's going on can actually be taken through to clinical trials and are delivering benefits to patients. And so just to yeah, quickly sum up, um, I've talked to highlighted a few examples where researchers here at Queen Mary are using stem cell-based models to study human disease, uh, examples of researchers who are focused exclusively on cancer stem cells, and a recent example of uh, using immunotherapy to better target uh, breast cancer. So uh, thank you everyone for your attention, and uh, as Kristen mentioned, if you do have any questions, feel free to uh, get in touch, and we're happy to uh, help you with anything and discuss further.